Hello and welcome to Bobo Banzo Vintage Life. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Lisa, I'm a vintage inspired dressmaker and dressmaking teacher. Today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about my dressmaker's ball frock. Dressmaker's ball, it's tomorrow. I'm going straight up there after I finish teaching. So it'll be like a quick get in the car and off to get glammed up. Dress still isn't finished, so I'm going to tell you a bit more about that in this video. Um, and then next week I'll be able to show you pictures of me wearing it and talk about it in more detail. But today I'm going to tell you where I'm at, uh, extras I've made to embellish it and go through some of the sewing issues I've had. So I shall see you back here again in a moment. <laughs> These are my final sketches of the dress from the pattern, but how I envisaged it. So yeah, using Simplicity 8731. And then I've got this beautiful satin backed gold crepe and the tulle, and then my drawings of how I believe it will look, which it does now. I've chatted with you a little bit about the inspiration for my dressmaker's ball dress and where it came from. Uh, I just want to go through it as like a proper storyline, totally focusing on the dress today. So it all started when I found this absolutely stunning black velvet 1930s clutch purse and it's all uh, embroidered in gold embroidery with little um, stars and then these beautiful roses that's all sort of gathered in the little yoke at the back here and I absolutely adored this and I knew that I wanted a chance to use this because it's such an elegant little purse. So I knew the colours gold and black of what I was going to use and I started to design my dress and me being me left it all to the last minute so I went with a pattern in the end rather than drafting my own pattern. So I decided to use Simplicity 8731 which I've not used before. I had read some reviews where people had sewn it themselves and they talked about inserting the centre front panel being a complete pig of a sew um, and I can see why but I've done it in a totally different way even though it has been a bit of a swine. So yeah, there have been issues. I'll tell you about those in a bit. So starting off my inspiration, decided on my colours of gold and black. And so then I designed my dress of how it's going to be. So I'm going to show you that in a moment. I also knew I wanted to tie in, because I love to accessorise. So I'm actually going to be wearing this black ring I've got on today, which I found in a charity shop, this sparkly black ring. Um, so I only wanted to accessorise with black and I love my corsages. I made, I designed these last year, I did a workshop on them. So I made a red one originally, poinsettia, or poinsettia, well, I can't remember. Poinsettia, we'll go with that um, pronunciation. And then I made a lovely white one and I adore putting these on. And they remind me, you know, the 40s corsages, you know, you'd have either real flowers or fake flowers, how they would come down over the shoulder of a, a dress. It's a quite a large statement piece. So I've made one in black velvet um, with all these gold beads sewn in. So that will go over. So that'll pick up the gold on the bodice of my dress. The dress is also going to be covered in lots of these little black bows. Um, there's two on the front and four on the back. Now I cheated. I just got them quickly made before I went to um, teach sewing last night and I literally have cut out black velvet ribbon because making them from velvet they were just going to be about that thick really deep and then I hot glue gunned them all together rather than sewing it all it was far far quicker to glue gun them together so a bit of cheaty sewing now I'd made most of my dress up till Wednesday which was a real turning point this Wednesday of the dress kind of going Ugh, and I think I've rescued it now but up to that point, I knew I really wanted to make some sort of over jacket. I have talked about it here with you about making a bolero. And I looked at various patterns and I just decided on Wednesday, was it Wednesday morning? Yeah, it was Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, I decided I'm gonna draft my own. I've been wearing my Gertie swing jacket that's got the, the high collar. And I also was looking at this little jacket, this Noah Noah jacket, that I think I've shown on here before, the beautiful frills. And 
I wanted to make something along these lines and I just thought, you know, that's so easy to draft, um, adding in the extra ease. So I drafted the front and the back bodice of this jacket, decided to use the Bella tea dress um, sleeves, so I've got the little pleat on them and the four darts on the shoulder to round that in. So I used those sleeves and I just thought, you know what, if this doesn't work, then I haven't got a jacket, I'll wear a cardigan over the top. I've got a Bollero cardigan. I think because I wasn't so invested in it working, it went really well. And I decided I wasn't gonna line it, so I cut all the gold um, by the strips out of my dress fabric to do Hong Kong seams on all the um, seams that you'll see. The facings are gold. And I put my jacket on and I was absolutely thrilled. So that worked. And then the next day it all went dress, um, comes down past the waist and sculpts down onto the hips before the skirt starts. And when I put it on, I think this was uh, Monday or Tuesday, I put it on and I realised it needed a good um, inch and a half, you know, on each side or more really, pinched out. Um, it kind of puckered out, which held the skirt away funny. So to take out those side seams, obviously it was removing um, the skirt, which left me with a load of extra skirt, which would be fine if I'd got one layer of skirt, but I'd overlaid the um, velvet flop tulle over the skirt in one continuous panel because I didn't want any seams sewn in that, you know, any visible seams. So therefore I had to take the whole skirt off and the central front panel had got a water stain on it and it pulled slightly off to the left. The bodice I'd got a water stain on satin is just a nightmare when you stain it. You cannot get it out of the water stain. Um, hence I made my brooch bigger because it's going to cover that up. I'll show you that in a bit. So I ended up actually deconstructing this whole dress to get back to where I wanted to be. I had to go and buy a little bit more of the gold fabric. I hadn't got enough to make a new central panel. Um, yeah, so it felt a bit of a oh, day. My lovely partner, when he got home, was giving me lots of suggestions, saying, oh, do this, do this, and, and it was helpful. And some of them were really good suggestions, but at the time it was also, please like, you're making my head explode because I'm trying to solve these problems. And, oh, and I was thinking, I'm not gonna wear this. And he said, well, wear your pink cocktail dress that you made for the Cam's cocktails that never happened because of COVID. And I was like, I want to wear this dress. And this dress is autumnal colours and that's spring colours. And this is what I've got my heart set on. Determination was motivating me. And then yesterday around all my other things, there was a turning point. The dress started to work. She's saying that. I, I put the zip in, but I've not tried it on yet. I'm hoping to God that fits because then I can just sew in the, the lining, I can attach these bows down the back and hem the dress. We're talking this is Friday afternoon and I'm teaching tomorrow morning and then we're driving to Leicester but trust me it will get done. God knows why I'm on here filming this but I wanted to chat with you about where I'm at with it now. So that's where I'm at. So I'm going to show you the dress um, and yeah hopefully chuck in some of the techniques to show you some of the process. Um, if not this week, then I'll show you next week. So I'll go over and show you the dress and uh, yeah, speak to you in a minute. Right, first off, I'm going to show you the bolero, which I am totally thrilled with. So you can see the gold facings on the inside and I've bias bound the um, gold there. And then I've got the gold Hong Kong seams in there, so I've all these pops. I put velvet at the back here because I wanted it to feel nice and soft against the back of my neck. And I've done a bound buttonhole, so that's all in there. And then I've got to pop some um, shoulder pads in here. Normally I'd make my own shoulder pads, but time is running out, so I'm gonna pop in some ones that I bought. So they'll just give that little lift to the shoulder. So it scoops back down to the back there. <laughs> And the button I've sewn on, I would like to do this up, but I'm happy for it to be exposed. The button I've sewn on is actually too big, but I chose it because it's just this most beautiful Edwardian uh, button. If I just take it off here, I just wonder if you can see that. If not, I'll do a close up. I was going to pop this on to show you. I'm absolutely flipped to bits with this. 
how it's worked out. So I will be making more and I've got plans for sharing how to do this. I'm just thinking this would be a great idea to add to my list um, for the Patreon when that actually happens. So I can show you how to make your own. There we go. Just really chuffed. Obviously once I've got the shoulder pads, I've got a little bit more, more lift. Excuse over jeans and a t-shirt, but ah, oh, and it's just, if you stroked a mole, I imagine this is what a mole would feel like stroking it. It's just the softest velvet. It's, um, yeah, and if I have that out like that, just really Now here's the dress. The water stain is here and round here. Oh, great. So if I get the brooch, just place it. This is how I'm seeing the brooch to be worn. And then you have this velvet, it'll come up a little bit higher on me. The velvet will just be underneath the bust with these bows either side. And then this gold central power is telling me about, and then I've got the tulle overlay. Just pop that down there. And then it goes into a V back. You can see I haven't finished the zip. I mean, it's like a hot mess inside still. So I've got to sew that in. And then the, here's the two all lovely and loose. And I'll just grab the, these bows so you can see an idea. So they'll go down the back. I'll have one there, one there, and there, and another one at the bottom there. So they'll break that space up in the back. So I'm absolutely thrilled with this now. I was pulling my hair out the other day over my dress, but now it appears to be rather a quickie today, isn't it? Um, I, I filmed all sorts of sewing the dress um, and whatnot, but I really haven't got time to edit a whole video and cut that in. So um, hopefully I will share that next week. It will all pan out to share, yeah, next week, because I will have time next week. I've got to be realistic. I need to be getting on finishing this dress, don't I? As time is of the essence and I just want to like, edit this film and get it out there to you. I just really wanted to share the process and and how things aren't smooth sailing, but how you can sometimes rescue them. And, oh yeah, it all just flows. I'm just so last minute, it's part of me. It's how I've always been, have to go with that. But I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. You know, it's gonna be so weird. There's so many people that I have either spoken to or will recognize through Instagram. Um, and there they are all going to be in the same room. Really interesting to see them, see what they've made, just the buzz of the whole thing, getting dressed up, glammed up myself, you know. Feels a bit mean leaving my love back in the hotel room, but you know, he does not want to come and be in a room full of sewers. And yeah, he'd be bored, I think, even though he knows about sewing because it's all he ever hears about with me. But there we go, he'll have a really nice time what he's doing and um, I will have a lovely time while I'm doing. So I really enjoyed um, sharing the process. Can't wait to show you pictures of all and what I look like in my dress. Hopefully I look as glam as I picture in my brain. I'm gonna hope to be sticking on false eyelashes, gotta paint the nails, do all of that thing. Um, yeah, so it's fun time for the glam. Just gotta finish the outfit. So until next time, thanks for joining me today. If you really enjoy my videos, if you're new to finding me, please subscribe so you don't miss out. Um, pop in any ideas of things that you'd like me to talk about. I mean, yeah, I've got a whole list of more that I need to share with you, want to share with you, but I love hearing what you've got to say. So chat away and until next time, have a lovely time whatever you're doing and speak to you soon, goodbye.